<laughs> wow. Is oh. It oh, it's an iterate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Clarissa. <laughs> oh my. I could introduce her. What in the world? This is Clarissa. She uh, she had a dinosaur named after her, and she's sitting here on a bone that just got flipped, and she's picking away at some of the weight to make it a little easier to carry out. She's not going to be around to help carry it out, so I don't know why she cares. <laughs> I'm Greg Wilson, a paleontologist at the University of Washington and the Burke Museum. I'm sitting here in northeastern Montana. Uh, in rocks that represent the Hell Creek Formation, the last chapter in dinosaur history. And I'm sitting before a, a beautiful uh, matchstick assemblage of bones representing the hindquarters of an herbivorous dinosaur, a hadrosaurid dinosaur, a duck-billed dinosaur. And this is a dinosaur that lived 350 or so thousand years before all dinosaurs go extinct. So it and all the other bones that we find in this uh, approximate level help us understand what was happening to dinosaurs and uh, all other animals and plants during that very last chapter in dinosaur history. So this is an important uh, research specimen that will have a large impact on our understanding of this mass extinction event. I overwintered, had been exposed, some spalling was already on it, vinac down, and then new spalling was evident when the jacket was removed this summer. What do you got there? Well, all I could say is it's a bone. And whether it connects to this bit of bone over here, I don't know. The bone's pretty fragile, so we put a little Vinac on there to kind of hold it together. What's Vinac? Doesn't say Vinac on your bottle. Oh my gosh. It's actually well, Paraloid B72. There you go. With acetone. Yeah, well, 
I'll let that set up and try and clear some more off. Is every bone going to get covered with that? Pretty much. Everything's fragile after sitting around for 65 million years, as we will be. <laughs> Good job. So you got some vinacking going on here. What are you doing? Trying to stabilize this stuff so it will stay where, essentially where it's sitting. When we get it back in the lab, we can undo this and put all those pieces back together where they belong. And you're getting some on the stone too, that's okay? Well. Hold it together? It's too bad, but it depends on whether we collect the stone with it or not. And that depends on where things break. some very very hard rock um, that these bones are encased in this is a vertebra right here as you see it's pretty it's pretty intact though unfortunately because the rock is so hard it's hard to extract it from around without the bones themselves starting to crack so I've been putting a lot of vinac all around it as I expose it this is I think that's bone 27 we don't we have no idea what this is but so far it seems as if it's broken off here probably goes under um, and of course we've got this kind of strange bone which seems to end here but I'm going to continue to try to dig in around it and see if there's more to it so this uh, matrix direction. that it's the bone is in is this some of the hardest stuff you've ever dealt with uh, yeah it's very very hard it gets hard and it gets harder right yes it uh yeah seems it's a little bit softer maybe starts to get a little bit softer, but it's still pretty hard. What are you working on there? Just trying to get a trench in here between these bones so we can get them both out of here. It looks like bone that you're chipping in. Now this right here is wood, mm -hmm. so this will just fall, fall away. Van Gogh. Here's where there was bone breaking up and kind of falling out of the uh, of the main femur here, and uh, I glued that together with the paraloid, and then when I removed the rock from under it, it stayed put, so that back in the prep lab we can take those little pieces apart and fit them back in there like a jigsaw puzzle and get it all nice and smooth and proper like it's supposed to be. It's possible. But that doesn't really make sense. See, this should be where a bone comes off and that should be like a hip or shoulder. So it wouldn't make sense for that thing to go into it. So we're trying to figure out if two bones that are exposed come together in one bone or if it's a different one. It's a good point to the one that's That one and the, the one on top. Yeah, are those the same bone? I think it is. We'll find out. Field tip. Leave your tools in the shade in Hell Creek. It's the best sight I've ever seen, besides the movies. <laughs> so it's amazing. So what are you seeing? I'm seeing a whole bunch of bones. Seeing a bunch of ribs and something long and thin, maybe pelvis. Do you see an ossified like tendon? Like tibia. See the ossified tendon? Oh yeah, yeah. Vertebra. Another tibia. There's a cool tab over here. Yeah, that little one. So cool. 
be a fever out there. It's a little one. There's probably something in the foot. Apparently, that's the limit of the bone bed, then, huh? Oh, we all saw. Yeah, we don't know that. Oh, look at underneath it. Underneath it. There might be underwear or sand. Yeah, well, we did find some more of this hard stuff under this soft layer. Yeah, I don't see how we're going to get that. We're not going to be able to take that whole big slab out. Oh, no. <coughs> we're going to have a busier Bruce. What are we up for? Yep. Yeah. So, are, what kind of bones are we looking at? Address <coughs> or limbs and ribs mostly. And limbs and ribs? We found the ossified tendon. I found the ossified tendon. Now. I, I found. Oh, that's the... Uh, oh, Actually, Wolf would like a round of applause, please. Yeah. 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 Oh, what is that long thin bone here? Yeah. So I think what we're looking at here is the the for, well. I'm pretty sure we're looking at the formational contact between the Hell Creek Formation, which is. This grayer stuff here that we're all currently standing or sitting on, and this sort of tanner stuff that's above us. And this coal layer here, or lignite layer, is the first coal, lignite, whatever you want to call it, at the base of the Tulloch Formation. And this formational contact, this lithologic contact, is in many places around this area synchronous with the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary. And if we're lucky, which I can't, haven't seemed to have much luck here yet, um, we may find a small clay layer in here that reflects um, asteroid impact debris at the base of this coal layer, um, which I haven't seen in this particular hole I've dug, but I have definitely seen it elsewhere at the base of this coal. Um, so this, this is the mass extinction boundary, or at least... Um, the final part of the mass extinction, if the mass extinction uh, may have lasted a little longer than an instantaneous moment. So, what contact? So, what this, what the contact is between the Hell Creek and the Tulloch, but towards uh, the Hell Creek Road that we've been on, some distance on either side of it, the contact coincides with the temporal boundary. Alright? So, this is a mental thing. Rocks are not always in sync. As we move this way, so as we move, um, this was the Jeff found this last year. This was showing, and that's what he first spotted. And then there were just little bits of bone showing here and there along this stretch of. Last year we collected all the floats. There wasn't a whole lot of it. That's back at the museum. But with not much float out here and with a bunch of bone going into the rock, we figured there was going to be something cool here. But given how hard this rock is, we figured we were going to need power tools. So we brought out a generator and a couple of jackhammers. We have been able to remove that much rock. <laughs> in the course of the last, what have we been here since, working on it since, since the 22nd. And uh, so we've got it as ready as we could for you guys. And what we're going to have happen today, what I want to see happen today, is to get this jacketed, flipped, and hauled out of here. To get this jacketed, flipped, wow. and hauled out of here. <laughs> That's going to require cutting this poor bone here, but you know, you, we can't take it all in one chunk. It's I don't think any of you could handle it. Some of you guys want to carry it? We're going to break Why this bone here and take this all in a chunk and haul it out of here. That's the plan, anyway. To get this chunk out of here, this bone. And then once that's done, maybe we can take this. <laughs> so we'll take as much of it as we can today. Some of it we won't be able to. And we'll just have to give it a protective jacket. Yeah, we 
Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, it's like uh, nope. Oh, it's like, it's like, okay, it's not quite ready. Down here. Dig a tunnel. Yeah. Coming coming like a uh, let's loose. dig it some more. All right, we're rolling. No, that sounds better already. <laughs> what are the words? Pink, fluffy, and it comes and I heard, getting on me. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> <laughs> the red knot, Calidris canutus. Surely the Cinderella of shorebirds. The red knot, although lost in a mass of brown and gray sandpaper, sandpipers, and rare fall appearances, Sand what? is an absolute knockout during its brief spring appearance. Among its usual tide flat neighbors, only the Dowichers undergo a similar transformation. I, I can't read. <laughs> Whereas the red knot's dull, non-breeding plumage blends into the uniform grays and browns and mudflats and sandy their plumage, beaches, they're its or not? bright summer wardrobe, wardrobe matches rusty-tinged arctic grasses, sedges, <laughs> shrubs, and wildflowers. Red knots feeding in tightly packed groups at a few favored spots along Washington's coast in spring. <laughs> may have started their trek as far south as the shores of South America. The Canutus part of the scientific name refers to King Canute, who commanded the tide to halt, something a flock of red knots may seem to be doing on its shoreline food patrol. <laughs> Hey, 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 cheers! Okay. Bravo, bravo. Well, if you're gonna write a book. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I didn't want to make a movie. Wait, what? I'm accidentally making a movie. <laughs> Excuse me? You were supposed to do.